good morning. It uh, is a little nippy out there this morning, but uh, praise God. Uh, my son is an avid fisherman, so he went out fishing in a little boat on a little river uh, yesterday because he says, oh, it was 43 degrees in the afternoon. And then he brought home some little minnows and I said what's that for he says well I'm going ice fishing next week and I said ice fishing and he says yeah he says I've watched the weather there's gonna be a snap in the cold temperature and then it'll be able to go ice fishing so I said oh better you than me you know I, I uh, enjoy the nice heat in a house praise God in the Lord's house it's nice and warm this morning so those of you who are here just enjoy uh, being nice and toasty but more importantly than that is the presence of God. And he will warm your heart this morning. And I trust that the Lord will speak to you and uh, give you a, a super touch this morning as he continues to minister to us and through us to each other this morning. Amen. Amen. So those who are out on Facebook, uh, you just be blessed too. Uh, we're welcoming you here this morning. And as, the, as Edna starts to play the music, uh, turn your attention right now. And be attuned to what God has to say to us this morning. Amen. God bless. Give pastor a call. Um, 
those of you that are on Facebook Live and um, on YouTube, his number is 203-984-0367. If you call that number, you can be a part of the prayer meeting that, that night. We begin at 5 p.m. on Monday evening. Uh, we share our burdens. We share our um, testimonies. Uh, we rejoice with each other. We weep with each other, and we pray with each other. We have a great time, and the presence of God is real, and he comes down and blesses us. So um, if you want to be a part of that, you don't have to join every week. It's not a, a thing. But I, I will say that um, whereas when we used to meet at the church, sometimes if the weather was inclement or we were away or whatever, we didn't have it. But when we do it on the phone, I mean, we were at our son's house and we just went up to the bedroom and we were staying and we had prayer in there. So it, it's a really a great thing because we don't stop praying. So and I think that blesses God, because he wants us to pray all, without ceasing. That's what the Word of God says. Also, just wanted to um, remind you about giving your tithes and offerings, because the church still needs to function, pay the electric bills and all the bills that come with it. Um, if you're doing that, you can disregard what I'm saying. If you have just fell off and forgotten about it, um, I'm just reminding you. So, that's it. Um, not that we want to be money grubbers, not at all. We just want to ask you to participate in helping to run the church. So, praise God. Um, next Sunday at 10 o'clock, we meet back here for worship. And thank God that you all, you all are here today, and we welcome you back next week, too. Pray you all have a blessed week, and that God meets all of your needs. Amen. Amen. Praise God. We are truly, truly blessed. To have such a great musician so uh, we're playing a hymn for you today and we're going to sing along it's 317 317 long looked at me
you may be seated. Praise God. Does anybody have a testimony this week? Well, I have a, a little bit of a testimony in the fact that uh, there is a gentleman we've been praying for. He is a pastor out in uh, Long Island, and he was in a uh, very, very bad, bad condition with COVID. And we've been praying for him, praying for him, praying for him. And he came out of the ICU. He's doing well. He's still got some uh, some issues uh, because of all the problems he's had with his, his lungs. He actually has a hole in the lung that the doctors say will heal, but it's going to take time. His uh, strength overall is very weak, but it's coming back. He actually got on, on Facebook and spoke and said, thank you, thank you so much for all the people who have been praying for me because God is touching me. He says, I still have this hole, I still have this weakness, I still have some blood clots, but the amount of oxygen that they have to give me is going down and the, everything else is improving. So I know that uh, God is answering these prayers. So keep praying for them and uh, continue to uh, see all those. There's so many who have COVID uh, that uh, continue to pray for them and for the people who are trying to get the vaccines out and all those other things. Uh, pray for the whole process that's, that's going on. And, uh, you know, as it goes on, uh, it, these are, are people that are working in the healthcare field and everything else. You know, God bless them. They're going through all that. Amen. Anybody else have a testimony of what God has done? God has Amen. Uh, I live at Keystone Group Home near uh, Keystone Cemetery, and there's a Muslim out there, and there's a dozen buildings too. And it was a beautiful Muslim woman. Uh, I, I greeted her in her custom, I said, I'm all right. And um, she gave me four gray donuts and a couple of ice water. And I turned around and lifted to one of the donuts into the air, and I said, Thank you, Heavenly Father. To the nation of Islam. Wow. Amen. Well, pray for, for receive Jesus. Want to receive Jesus? And thank you in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Yes. Um, first of all, I want to thank everybody for the prayers that have been going up on my behalf. It's been a lot better. Yes. So, what your foot is getting better? Yes. My back and my leg is doing a little bit better, but every now and then it uh, comes back. But it, it has to be better. Amen. Continued and healing. While, I'm Amen. Well, we'll pray for continued healing in that back and leg. Amen. <laughs> but thank the Lord that He's touching you. Amen. Yes. I wonder if there's any update on the market. On little Margaret, she is uh, improving, doing. Pretty well. She is in the nursing home, and uh, from what I 
Pardon me? She She's passed that. She's gotten past COVID, so that's that's a good thing. She did have COVID, but she is now out, and she's actually uh, interacting very well with the people at the at the nursing home. So it's 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 been a very good thing for her. So praise God. She is on the mend, and so praise God. Keep her in prayer, though. Amen. Amen. Any other prayer concerns? Yes. Okay. All right. Yes. My wife's sister and her son both had it over. We prayed for them last week. Hopefully this week will be over. I don't know. Amen. My sister went to have her, and my sister Dolores went to have her um, cataract removed. She was supposed to be last month and the next one. And when they stored that stuff in her eyes, she had an attack, and they had to bring it to the hospital. She was there for three days. And uh, the only thing they could figure out was that they said whatever they shot in her eyes, whatever liquid it was, had, she had to be allergic. She had an allergic reaction. Okay. And uh, I saw her last night, and she's feeling better. But she's still in the town. Okay. I guess she went through a lot of that. Pray for her healing. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. And the other thing is, Tuesday's a time for a shot in my eye, and so I need prayer because that works so wonderful every time. Amen. I'm snow on Tuesday because I shot a lot of snow. I hope that will work. Well, we'll just ask the Lord to hold, hold that back then. That's it. Amen. Pray that the Lord will hold the storm. Everything will be perfect timing. And uh, he's blessed you before with that shot that's continued to work. we we'll just pray that it, it works. Amen. Amen. Annette, you have a couple of prayer requests. We're... Sixteen-year-old to have a little better choices in who they hang out with. Amen. Amen. Anyone else? Well, we're going to continue to pray for our brother James Moffat. He uh, finally got to the doctors and uh, they did the MRI and everything else, but they didn't give him any update on what to do. His uh, right arm is still in a lot of pain now. His left arm is giving him problems too, so he needs. Uh, Prayer on both of those things, and uh, if you've ever had any problems with your rotator cuff, you know that it, you know, you, if you don't move it, if you just, you know, keep it, you're not too bad. But as soon as you move it at all, tremendous pain. And uh, he had some building projects he had to get done and uh, had a, a difficult time. So pray for him, as uh, God would bring a healing to him. Amen. Anything else? Praying for our country and for uh, all the people that uh, are still suffering from the displacement and job problems and all those other things. I mean, we can have a list that is a mile long, but uh, just pray that God would have a, a perfect uh, way and plan in uh, each and every one of us life, in our lives, that Jesus would be Lord. Amen? Amen. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord God, as we come before you, we thank you. For you are the King of kings and the Lord of lords. You are the one who is the creator of the very universe. Lord God, we give you the praise and the honor and the glory. We pray for all these who are in need of a physical touch. Lord God, that have been battling this coronavirus those who have other issues, medical issues, Lord God, of bones and muscles and backs and legs and feet that need to be healed and strengthened. We thank you for what you've done in the past and how you're touching, and we give you 
praise for that, but Lord God, continue to touch. Those who have tried to have medical procedures and had uh, negative results, Lord God, we pray that the doctors would have the wisdom, grant them the understanding to be able to help all those who are in need. Lord God, those who are going through different situations in their lives, Lord God, we pray that you would touch, be with them, and uh, help the procedures that they're going through to just point all the honor and glory to you. Give them peace as they go through all of these procedures. Our lives are before you, Lord God. Each day of our life, Lord God, help us to turn to you and hear from you, be directed by you, and be able to have a purpose and a plan that is approved by you. Lord God, there are so many things going on in the world around us, but the most important thing is to tell people about Jesus, that there is no other way, that you are the way, the truth, and the light, and no man comes to the Father but by you. So Lord God, help us to boldly go out and let our light so shine before men, that Lord God, that we would know and have joy in our heart of who you are, and that in spite of all the struggles that are around us, that we would know that you are in control, that you are the one, that you are on the throne. Lord God, you are the King of kings and the Lord of lords. Lord, help us to keep our attention directly Lord God. Lord, let us forgive those people around us that sin against us. Thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen and amen. God is so good. We take a look at some of these things, and today I want you to turn in your Bibles, if you would. loves the world this is in the world the lust of the flesh is not from God is not from the Father but from the world and the world is passing away, and also its lusts. But the one who does the will of God abides forever. Children, it is the last hour. And just as you have heard that the Antichrist is coming, even now many Antichrists have arisen. And from this we know that it is the last hour. May God add a blessing to the reading of his word. Heavenly Father, Lord God, I pray for an anointing upon me as I bring forth your word. Lord God, anoint those who are hearers also, that they would be able to be receiving from you what you have for them this day. Touch their hearts, Lord God, and help them to receive it, not from me, but from you. We thank you and praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, if we take a look at this, this is probably one that the world tries to twist and use and say, well, there's, you know, inconsistent with what God has. 
I want you to break it down with me if you would. In that very first verse, it comes with a command. John is writing this and it says, Do not love the world, nor the things in the world. Stop right there. Isn't that kind of strange? Well, I want you to understand the de definition or what it really means here when he's, this is John speaking about the world. In this particular case, he's not speaking about God's creation. For all the way back into Genesis, it says God created the heavens and the earth. God created the day and the night. God created man and woman. God created the animals. God created all of these things. And each time he created one of these things, he says, that's good. It's good. It's good. So we're not talking about that. We're not talking about the fact that there are humans that he has created in his image. We're not talking about these things. But what we are talking about is the fact that the world has had some problems. The world is under a dark shadow of some things around us. You know, we could say that for God so loved the world. Well, God loved the world. Well, what he loved was his creation. What he loved was the people that were there that he gave his only begotten son to get things right. Because things were certainly not right. The world was having problems. The world is filled with disastrous things. If you look at Thessalonians 2, chapter 1 and through 3, you don't have to turn to it, just listen for a moment. And you were dead in your trespasses and sin, in which you were previously walking, according to the ways of the world, according to the rulers of those who exerted authority over the lower heavens, the spirit that is working for disobedience. I want you to take a look at it. God has given a, an ability for Satan to have rule over some of these things. And in fact, when Jesus was in the wilderness, Satan came and tempted him, said, I will give you all of these kingdoms. Yeah, uh-huh. He had the right to kind of give these physical things. But that's not what we're talking about. We take a look even in 1 John here at the end of it in chapter uh, 5 it says we know that we are of God and the whole world is under the sway of the evil one we are gods the world is under the sway of the evil one we take a look at a lot of things around us in the world today where they take a look at some of the things that the world has to say about quote spiritual leaders when I hear that term, it just drives me nuts. Because spiritual leaders, what spirits? What are they leading you to? You know? Is it what the Word of God says? Is it what Jesus said? Is it what the Jewish main law said? Jesus was asked, what was the major law? It says to love the Lord your God with all your heart and soul and mind and strength. And love your neighbor as yourself. Jesus laid it out about loving God first. Do we truly do that? Do we love the Lord our God with all our heart and all our mind, with all our strength, with all our very being? Do we love God with everything? Jesus summed it up easy, even simpler than that says, if you love me, if, if you love Jesus Christ, the one who suffered and died and gave his life, the one who paid the debt that you had, if you truly love Jesus, it's a, Jesus says, if you love me, keep my commandments. That you love one another as I have loved you. Whoa. Lay my life down for you? Yeah. Church, we, we need to know that this is where it is all about. The world will tell you all kinds of things. People will give all kinds of illustrative things of how dedicated they are. I'm this and I'm that. You know? 
I'm a devout follower. But see, you know, maybe I'm showing my age, but there was an old song about Buddha. And it goes like this. Oh, it won't be old Buddha that's sitting on the throne. It won't be old Mohammed that's calling us home. And it won't be Hare Krishna that plays that trumpet tune. For we're going to see the sun, not Reverend Moon. Now you can call yourself a Baptist, not be born again. A Presbyterian or a Methodist, and still die in your sin. You can even be charismatic and sing and dance and jump a pew. But if you hate your brother, you won't be one of the chosen few. Now you get the point? You see, the world tries to tell you that there are many ways that lead to God. But that's a lie from the pit of hell. Satan is a liar and a deceiver from the very beginning. He has always been a liar. He will always be a liar. And even when he tells you the truth, it's a lie. You see, we, we know that he twists things around. You know, we take a look at a lot of these things. So when we talk about the world, we're talking about the political world. We're talking about the spiritual world of Satan. The problems that we have in Ephesians chapter 6 verses 11 and 12, it tells us to put on the full armor of God so that we might stand against the tactics, the schemes, the problems, the attacks of the devil. Now church, it's not telling unbelievers, it's talking about believers to put on the full armor of God. And that the spiritual battle in that we are hearing is not about flesh and, flesh and blood. It is against rulers and principalities in high places of darkness, spiritual forces of evil. We need to talk about these things, that this is what we are battling. We need to know that it says right here, it says, <coughs> do not love the world. Don't love the thing that the Satan has kind of painted a picture of. If we love the world and the things of the world, the love of God, it says love of the Father, the love of all that he has planned is not in us. Take a look at verse 16 with me. I have written in the margin of my Bible, the unholy trinity. The unholy trinity, the three things is the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eye, and the boastful pride of life. It says, In all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eye, and the boastful pride of life is not, underline that, is not from the Father, but from the world. The world offers you all kinds of things. The end of verse 16 says, All of these things, this lust, and what we see with lust is means unhealthy desires are there. The lust of the eye, the lust of the flesh, the lust of boastful pride in our life. These things are not of God, but they're of the world. Oh, I gotta have the best suit, I gotta have the best car, I gotta have the best this. You know, I'm gonna go out and get a brand new car. What's wrong with the old one? Oh, I don't know, but it, it, it doesn't have all the bells and whistles and... Really? You know? Do you have to walk three or four miles to get clean water? Do you have no shoes? Or are, are you uh, out in the middle of nowhere? Do you have all this stuff? Think how blessed we are that we even have a car that runs. I thank God every time I get in my car and I turn the ignition and it starts. Hallelujah. Isn't it good? Because haven't you ever been in a situation like we had our one car that ended up needing a fuel pump? We figured it out, but every now and then it just wouldn't start. But I have to get out of the car and go on to the back bumper and jump up and down and bounce it to get the gas to go through the fuel pump to 
go back in the car and start it up. You know? You know, sometimes we, we, we look at situations and we thank God for what we have, but, but you know, sometimes it's just a, a simple solution. There was a missionary who was out in the particularly country that he was in and he had to drive from place to place and he had a car that really kind of acted up. So there was another missionary who was coming to take over for this one and he says, well, you know, let me show you how to drive my car. He says, well, I know how to drive a car. He says, oh no. He says, get in. So he got in the car and he got to the driver's side and he started to push the car, went along, jumped in and popped the clutch and boom, started up. He says, why are you doing that? Well, it, it, it just won't, it won't turn over. So you got to so he stopped at the first place, and he says, now, now when you stop at this place, he says, you back up onto this little slope over here, and you park the car here. He says, why? He says, you'll see. <laughs> so they go in, and they do their business and everything else. They get in the car, and the guy lets off the brake, and the car starts to roll down the hill, and he pops the clutch, and boom, starts up. So they do this all day, and they get home. He says, brother, he says, do you mind if I look under your hood for a moment? He says, oh, oh okay. But, you know, th this truck's old. He says, okay. And he opens the hood and he looks and he finds out that the battery is disconnected. The reason that it wasn't starting was there was no charge. It was, hooks it up and says, hey, can you try to start your car? He says, oh, it's not going to start. Vroom. What? It's a miracle. God, no. We need to know what God is doing and what things are. Are we connected to the power source that changes our very life? There are things in our life that God wants us to do away with. The lust of the flesh, the lust of our eye, the prideful, boastful things. These things are not of God. Verse 16 tells us that we need to be away from these things. Romans chapter 16 verses 17 and 18 tells us, No, I urge you, brothers, to watch out for these same uh, this deceptions that are not a part of our doctrine of faith. You see, we are told in advance, watch out for the deception. Watch out for the lies. But do we do it? We take a look at some of the things. The lust of the flesh. There are things that are fleshly that are God's plans. Flesh has needs. There's no problem with that. Hunger, thirst, weariness, even sexual desires are things that God has. But if we eat too much and we are gluttons, it's sinful. If you drink and are drunken, it's sinful. Sleep can be a gift, but if you're lazy, it's shameful. Sex is a wonderful gift from God, but if it is not with your spouse, it is done wrong, it is immorality. We see that the world takes a lot of these things and points to them and says, oh, it's okay. It tells you all of these things with the flesh are okay. As long as it's good for you. Really? Now maybe it's because I was brought up in the 60s. You know, there was a saying that said, sex, drugs, and rock and roll. That was what everything was all about. But what was it really saying? Me, 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 me. Whatever makes my flesh feel good is fine. If I'm not hurting anybody else, fine. But what God says is that is not true. That is part of the unholy trinity. That the lust of our flesh, the things that we want to put upon ourselves, is sin. The lust of the eye, the things that I have, the things that I want. We take a look at the first pornography that ever had a problem. David lusted for Bathsheba. He was up on the roof and looked over. Oh, there's a, a naked woman taking a bath. Hmm, let me sit here and watch for a while. 
He had no right, no thing that he should have been doing that. And what did it lead to? It led to him taking her. It was a sin. It caused the lust of the eye, caused sin and disobedience to God. We take, take a look at different things that are in the Bible. Even Eve in the beginning saw the forbidden tree and it says it was delightful to the eye. So she saw something that looked good. And what did Satan say? Oh, you can have that. She actually took scripture and took it. And what did Satan do? He twisted it. Well, didn't God say that you could eat of all the trees that there are there? And she says, yes, he did say that I could eat of all the trees. But he said, if I eat of that tree, then I surely will die. Oh, you don't believe what God says. See how that's flipped? You see, the world takes it. I have seen people take the word of God and start to take things out of it and put things in it and taking out pronouns and taking out things. Oh, well, it really doesn't mean that. It, no, you don't want it to be hateful. You don't want the Bible to, really? You know, it, it, it's a misstatement. It says, hate the world. You can't hate the world because God loves the world. Really? He hates what it is that is sinful. He hates when it's under the power of the enemy. He hates it that there are principalities and powers and places that we are fighting against and we come in without our armor on. We come in and don't have on the full armor of God. We come in to do battle without wearing our equipment. Now, just re recently, and I'm, I'm a, you know, again, a football guy, and there was a quarterback who was, for the Chiefs, that was injured and thought he had a concussion and all this other stuff. But can you imagine what would have happened if he would have been tackled like that, not wearing a helmet? Can you imagine all the collisions that take place out there that if you're not wearing your helmet, if you're not wearing your equipment, if you're not wearing the protection that you need, how injured you truly would be? I, I, I just tell you, we need to be able to wear the equipment that we have. God is telling us again and again and again, we are in a battle and it is a spiritual battle and the, the world is a dark, dangerous place. We take a look at those things and a lot of people in a lot of different denominations and everything and quote spiritual leaders. I just heard one the other day said, oh well, just want to give you a word of encouragement that, you know, things look bad, but God will send his angels to protect you and, and take his charge over you. Really? What did the devil say to Jesus when he was on the pinnacle? Why don't you throw yourself off? God will send his angels and he won't let you bang your foot against the stone. Really? A lie. You see, what we need to know is that are we serving God? Are these things that are here, do we have anything that gets us to follow the world instead of following God? If the love of the world is in us, the love of the Father is not. That man who kind of gave you an encouragement didn't listen to what Jesus said. Jesus said, in this world, you will have tribulation. Hate to tell you, I got some bad news for you. You are not getting through this without tribulation. You are not getting through this without problems. But Jesus said, be of good cheer, for I have overcome the world. It's because of him, because of all of these things that we take a look at, that we need to know where our investment is. We need to put our investments in the things of God. You know, store up your treasures in heaven, where rust and moth don't eat. You know, we are storing up, it says, seek ye first, the kingdom of God and his righteousness. In Matthew, it tells us that all of these things, this is where we need to be looking at. What are we doing? For this world will pass away. 
Take a look what it says in verse 17. And the world, stop right there, and the world, which is those things which are under the rule of Satan, those things which are physical, those things which are carnal, those things which are around us, the world is passing away. And also its lusts. But the one who does the will of God, let me repeat that, he who does the will of God abides forever. He abides forever. For God so loved the world, this fallen place, filled with all kinds of problems. God loved the world and his creation so much that he sent his son to redeem us from the fallenness, to redeem us from our sins, that whosoever believeth in him, Jesus Christ, would not perish but have everlasting life. How are we going to have peace and joy and all of these things by trusting him. It says here, all these things will be done away with, but he who does the will of the Father abides forever. If I was going to give you something to invest in, and I said, invest in this company, but uh, in about two weeks it's going to collapse and be, be non-existent. You'd say, wait a minute, why would I want to invest in something that's not going to exist? Why would I want to invest in something that's going to collapse? Why would I want to do any of that? Well, I'll tell you what, we have been told and we have see this right here. The world's passing away. Things are going to get worse and worse. But <laughs> those who don't do the word of the Father, the work of the Father, those who serve God, those who put their trust in God, those who make a choice to follow him, abide forever. Now, I don't know about you, but that's, that's pretty good. I just know for a fact that one of the things that I've said, and I say it again, is that when I have my last breath here on earth, I know that I am going to be in the presence of God, and he's going to say something. He's going to say, either depart from me, I never knew you, or what I believe that he's going to say is I serve him, well done, my good and faithful servant. I don't know about you, but that brings tears to my eyes that he loves me so much that he says, well done, my good and faithful servant. Come on in. I've prepared all this for you. You see, we need to know that it's that which will endure forever. We take a look at these things which are the end times. It says in Verse 18 talks about the last hour. I want you to take a look with me. Turn with me to 2 Timothy. Please turn to 2 Timothy chapter 3. It's one that as I start to read it will be very familiar to most people. It says this, but realize this, that in the last days difficult times will come, for men will be lovers of self, lovers of money, boastful, arrogant, revilers, disobedient to parents, ungrateful, unholy, unloving, irreconcilable, malicious gossips, without self-control, brutal, haters of good, treacherous, reckless, conceited, lovers of pleasure rather than of lovers of God. Now here's the tough part. Holding to a form of godliness, although they deny its power, avoid such men as these. Those who are in things that are saying they are godly and that they are not. That they deny the power of God to do what is right. These people that have all of these things, these are the lusts of the flesh, the lust of the eye, the bold uh, desire to be having 
a light that is away from God, that they think that the things that they have are more important than the things of God. Who does it truly belong to anyways? We need to know that we need to give of what we have, for all good things come from the Father above. We need to know that it is giving back to God all that we have. We need to know that there is a plan and a purpose. We need to know that Satan is subtle in the way that he does things. He tries to draw you away. He tries to show you and allure you to the things, the worldliness, and subtly take away, subtly take and gradually persuade you to move away. I don't know, again, if it's because I'm getting older, but if I look back, and I'm sure that my parents and my grandparents said the same thing as they get older, that they look back. I look up at the things that when I was growing up about God and country, about doing the things that were right, things that I was brought up with, that we should, you know, be truthful, honest, kind of the Boy Scout model and all these other things and, and taking a look at these things, that we believe that our obedience to God was an important thing. But slowly, things switch. TV shows, I look at old TV shows and I said, oh, wow, we looked at those things? Nowadays, even a mild show says sex, violence, and drug use in the little thing. I'm sitting there going, but this is supposed to be a, a kind of a PG show. Even a PG show has all of these things in it. We take a look at it and the world has gradually accepted all of these things as, oh, well, that's just normal. Really? Really? How far away from God's plan do we need to get before we can finally wake up? There is a wake up call that is going on. In James chapter 4, verse 4, calls us adulterous. Don't you know that friendship with the world is hostility towards God? So whoever wants to be a friend of the world is an enemy of God. Do we want to choose who we'll be friends with? Are we going to be a part of the world that tells us, oh, you know, that Bible thing is outdated. Oh, you, you, you don't have to worry about that. You know, I sang you the song. It's not going to be old Buddha. It's not going to be Muhammad. It's not going to be Hare Krishna. It's not going to be even all these things. You can give your name as being a good whatever, fill in the blank. But if you don't give your heart and life to God, if you don't serve Him, if you don't love the Lord your God with all your heart and soul and mind and strength. It says, with all that you have, your very being is to love God. My question for you this morning is, do you love Him that much? Do you love him that much? Do you love him with everything? You see, we take a look at these things that subtly get in there and distress us in this current age. But you see, even his disciples, those who lived with him, those who walked with him, those who saw him, those who saw the resurrected Christ still had problems. I love the story of the disciples going fishing. Peter was the leader. He says, hey, I don't know what else to do. I'm going fishing. You want to come with me? So they all got in the boat and they all went fishing. And what did they get? Nothing. They fished all night. Nothing. But in the morning, who was on the beach? It was Jesus. He said, children, did you catch anything? 
He already knew that they had caught nothing. He already knew that the allures of life, the things that life had to have fish, to have money, to have a profession, were starting to pull on their, them again. They said, no, we didn't catch anything. He says, throw your net on the right side. And so what do they do? They, they throw their net on the right side and they greet this great catch of fish. And John says to Peter, he says, hey, that's Jesus. He doesn't help them pull in the fish. He doesn't have anything to do with that. He jumps off the boat and swims ashore because he wants to see Jesus. He gets ashore and Jesus already has breakfast prepared for them. The fire is going, the fish and the bread are there. And three times he says to him, he says, do you love me? Remember what I said, the challenge is, do you love the Lord your God with all your heart and soul and mind and strength? Here it is, he's sitting with Jesus and Jesus is saying to him, do you love me? He says, oh Lord, yes I love you. He says, feed my sheep. Ask them again, do you love me? He says, yes, Lord, I love you. Feed my lambs. He asks him a third time. He says, do you love me? He's hurt, he's to the quick. Lord, you know all things. You know that I love you. He says it again, feed my lambs. So what are we called to do? We are called to serve. We are called to feed. We are called to give of what we have. We are called to share the gospel message, the good news of Jesus Christ. That is the most important thing that the world needs today. It's not the shot it's not the food, it's not the money, it's not the things, it's not all of this. It's not people directing your life, telling you what's right and what's wrong. It's giving your heart and your life over to Jesus. He loves you and he cares for you. Love the Lord with all your heart. Love the Lord your God with all your heart and soul and mind. Love Jesus and keep his commandments. Everything else will pass away. It says right there that we just read that this world is going to pass away. First John says it pretty bluntly. He says, and the world is passing away. It's already begun. And the lust thereof are passing away. And he who abides in God will live forever. My question today is, if you've received Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. I have a dear friend of mine who, every time I get off the phone with him, says, I don't know if anybody's told you this today, but Jesus loves you. Every single time I get done talking to him, he reminds me, and I says, thank you, I always am waiting at the end of our call for you to say that, to remind me. Has anybody told you today, and I'm telling you today, is there anybody who has not heard it, that Jesus loves you? If they haven't heard it, have you told everybody? Have you reminded them that Jesus loves them? For <laughs> well, that's the most important thing that we have to give. Being a parent is great. Being a grandparent is great. Being a pastor is wonderful. Doing all these things is tremendous. But I tell you what, sharing the love of Jesus Christ is the most important thing that we can ever do. I want you to tell it. Take a hold of that too. That when you get done talking to somebody, have I told you lately that I love you? Have I told you lately that Jesus loves you? You see, that's the most important thing that we can do. Remember the love that Jesus Christ has for us. Flat out. Don't be an adulterer. Don't have that love of the world. Because if you have this love of the world, you're hostile towards God. My message for you today, love the Lord your God and tell the world about Jesus.
Let's close in prayer. Heavenly Father, Lord God, in the foolishness of preaching, Lord God, I pray that you would challenge us, that you would know that the things that we need to invest in is the kingdom, the kingdom of God that lasts and endures forever. For we know that you are the King of kings and the Lord of lords and that you are returning soon. Lord God, help us to be prepared. Let us be ready. But let us serve you until you come. Let's not give up, but let us continue to serve. Continue to tell people about the way. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. That there is no other way, there is no other purpose, that we would be able to put aside the lust of the flesh, put aside the lust of the eye, put aside our boastful pride in our living, and live for Jesus, our Lord and Savior. We thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. Join me in our last hymn. More love to thee.
And the truth is that this world is deceitful and wrong, but the truth is, be of good cheer, for I have overcome this world. We thank you, Jesus. We thank you that you have given us what we need, the armor that we need, the word that we need, the power that we need to overcome, to continue to trust you the more. And Lord God, this day I pray that all those who have heard this word would give their heart to you and tell those around them, have I told you lately that Jesus loves you. We thank you and praise you in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Thank you.